I'm joined today by DJ Dallas, a gun enthusiast who happens to be a pro football player. Who would be the scariest linebackers that you went against? Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen from this past season were, yeah, they were. They Just were the nightmares guys. on yeah, the field. No, they're, they're different. How would you feel if you had to go against, like, peak Ray Lewis? Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite historical topic or era? World War II or... The Civil War, American Civil War. Yeah. What uh, theater do you think was was the hardest to fight in? Europe or the Pacific? Like the Ost Front would be mm -hmm. the gnarliest mm -hmm. human fighting in history. It was the largest. Mm -hmm. I think from the American perspective, for sure, the Pacific. Oh, with you being in the league and being so into guns, was there ever like uh, them trying to hit me up for anything? Man, all the time. Really? Man, yes. I would get like comments like, oh, posting all these guns. We got a permit for him. Like, <laughs> what? Hey, buddy, it's called the Second Amendment. Exactly. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Armo Podcast, the ever warring podcast between administrative results and managerial outcomes. The managerial outcomes branch has taken a beachhead in administrative results territory and has repelled the counter assault. Logistics are wavering as usual, but we will hold on tightly. I'm joined today by DJ Dallas, a gun enthusiast who happens to be a pro football player. Hi, DJ. How's it going? Good, man. Good to have you on. Yeah, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to be on. Uh, hopefully, I'm I'm the best at this at your... I think you're so far so good, dude. <laughs> you're doing pretty good so far. How many yeah. podcasts have you done? Zero. First oh, one. Oh, hey, dude. We can knock it out. It'd be a good trial run. Yeah, heck yeah. I'm feel, I feel like you got the sauce. Huh? I like to think I have the sauce a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, I think you're doing pretty good. I just saw that you got signed with the Cardinals. Yep. So, yep. I mean, you live in Arizona, right? Yeah, I've been here for four years. Dang. Yeah, I've been here for four years. I'm, ex so. I'm excited because the uh, the Cardinals didn't have a great season. Bro, we got to get you to a game. I would love to go to a game. See, I was in Seattle, and we were far apart. Now yeah. we're, we're kind of close, so... Yeah, we got either, either way, I was willing to come to Seattle support you because it's like it's fun to know the guys that are playing. Yeah, for sure. As opposed to just being like, a, I'm a sure. sports fan, but then it's like knowing you guys, and it's like, oh, those are there's there's my boys going, they're they're playing, yeah, like that's like that's yeah, fun. for sure, you know, that's fun. for sure, like rooting for your guys. But um, I'm stoked that you got picked up with the Cardinals. Are you? So we're gonna do some football talk. Typically, you know, I'm known for more of the gun space, <sighs> but I am a football enjoyer. I dumped a lot of my football knowledge for niche gun stuff and like longbows. <laughs> So it's been a long time. All right. If you were like, all right, we're doing this coverage, I'd be like, oh, crap, I don't I don't remember. Oh, you got to go back in the... I'd have to go way right back in the yeah. recesses. Because I played football in high school. Yeah. But it's been a, been a long time since high school. So what position? Played middle linebacker. Were you good at it? I was a star. I was a captain of the defense. Did you like the hit? I loved the hit, dude. That was I played special like teams, the... and I played middle linebacker. I hated playing offense. No, 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 no. See, I, I played all, like, high school. Mm. I played quarterback. But I also was mm. like the the game saving DB, Ooh. so I would go in and just pick the best receiver and lock them and up, just clean house with them. But yeah, hitting was like that's my favorite. Yeah, like even now. Yeah, like I've I've got some like highlight hits. You, you get like a good read, and you know you're about to crack. So is there ever a time like when you're playing and you know like you know the other players and you're like I just can't wait to just absolutely hit that guy. So in offense, it's like we have attitude runs. Like I play running back, so. Mm. We got uh, attitude runs. Like when I was in Seattle, it was duo. Mm -hmm. And duos just like line up best on best and run straight downhill. And you know contact is coming. Yeah. And uh, it's either <laughs> me or you at this point. So, <laughs> yeah, you got to you gotta tighten that chin strap who, up a little bit tighter. Who would be the scariest linebackers that you went against? Scariest linebackers? Yeah. Uh... I don't – I like to say that I'm not scared. I wouldn't say – I guess The best rephrase. linebacker? Like, just, like, dudes, you're like, all right, this is going to be a long day. Okay. Roquan Smith mm -hmm. for the – he plays for the Ravens now. No, no kid. Patrick Queen. Oh, man, yeah. Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen from this past season were – yeah, they were – they just were the nightmares guys. on yeah, the field. No, they're, they're different. Mm -hmm. They're different. Uh like Fred Warner's different. He's he's a good linebacker. Uh, I played against Bobby Wagner my whole career, like in Seattle and mm -hmm. even when he was at the Rams. But uh, 
Yeah, he's the best I've played against ever. Yeah. Him, Jordan Brooks were my teammates, and I went against those guys who were freaking all pro dudes mm. every day in practice. So I saw them every day. I wasn't really – that's why I say, like, I wasn't really fearful of any other linebacker because mm. I played against a guy who's, like, five-time, ten-time all pro. Yeah. Ten-time pro bowler. So you trained harder, so you guys to play easier. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think I I post on my Instagram story, uh, sweating out, bleed less. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, that's that's just the mentality I take with training and then like practice. So, do you? I feel like in my head, I feel like linebackers have gotten smaller. This is totally random. I feel like they've gotten smaller over the years compared to where they used to be. Oh, for sure. Like they like it used to be like these dudes were like six five, six five, two seventy. Yeah, yeah, just mass monsters. Yeah, now and you got now like, they cut them down to be like borderline yeah. like DBs or safety level. Yeah, they're like for speed six two, six three. You get you get some outliers. You get yeah. like the old school like six five, mm. two sixty guys. But nowadays it's really like. Six two, two thirty. Yeah, and they're fast as heck. Yeah, just explosive. When do you think that change happened? Was it like when? Like, do you think the offense was just getting way faster? So they're like, all right, these like maybe the offensive guys aren't as big, or it's like, I think it kind of started with the. Uh, you remember like Ray Lewis's era ending? Mm, vaguely, I remember like the prowess of Ray Lewis. Yeah. I was going to ask you like. How would you feel if you had to go against like peak Ray Lewis? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> He's, I know I said I'm not scared, but damn, that he was, was scary. that would be pretty scary. That dude nah, was a he freak, was man. Scary, yeah. he was scary as heck. Uh, but I do it. Like I, I wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah, I get it done. I expect I, nothing less from. Yeah, him. I find a way. I mean, that's yeah. what that's what this game is like. No matter how you feel, like my my old ball coach used to tell me, like success doesn't care how you feel. No. It only cares about the process. So, like, whatever you got to do to get it done, get it done. Mm. And so, like, for me going against Ray Lewis, I, I probably shit my pants, but <laughs> I get it done. Yeah, you'd make it. You make. You'd find a way. Yeah, for sure. How do you? Do you ever see the conspiracy theories about football being scripted? Oh, I'm a I'm a conspiracy junkie. <laughs> Bro, okay. I'm like perfect. <laughs> like the moon. Uh, a lot of stuff, JFK. We'll, so we'll much get stuff. to that. We'll so much stuff. That. But back to the football being scripted. That I mean, no, nah, I don't. It's they, not, they don't hand out scripts in the locker. Yeah, they don't say, give oh, us like, oh yeah, block here on this play. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, they don't. But I mean, you know, a lot of people seem to think that like it is scripted mm. just because. Uh, is there a strict NDA that you signed that you can't even talk about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, nah, shit! I'd probably be the one being the whistleblower on that, but uh, nah, man. A lot of people think it's scripted because mm. you get like certain stuff that happens. Like everybody was trying to say it was scripted when, uh, like in the playoffs, mm. the referee—I forget his name—but uh, it, it was like his his win loss totals favored the road team. Yeah, in the playoffs, and then it was the Chiefs in. Ravens game, yeah, and then the Ravens ended up losing to mm. the Chiefs on the road, yeah. And I mean, any given Sunday, that's what they say. That's right? what they say, dude. <laughs> I had to ask, so I had to ask. I was curious because I know you're a big conspiracy guy, yeah, for sure. And it's like you're also a pro football Man, player. You know, so. you know what? Uh, what kind of took me out is when the NFL put out like the uh, like all the star players reading the script. Mm. And then everybody's like, they're hiding it in plain sight. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I would have known about it yeah. if they were doing that. Yeah, I, would, I think I would have had an inclination. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, sure. that's a good point, dude. That's for a great sure. point. Man, that's so funny. Uh, when did you get into guns? Uh, so I've been hunting, like, most of my, like, adult life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, I'm big into hunting ducks. That's, like, my thing. Yeah. But uh, like, actually, like black rifles. I want to say like my sophomore year in college. Yeah, that's when I was like, kind of like getting my knowledge up about it, and then I bought my first rifle for myself, like mm -hmm. right before I got to the league. Okay, was there a moment you're like, I want to be more equipped? Was there like a catalyst, like going from like duck hunting mindset to like 
all right, I want a, I want a weapon that is strictly for self-defense and or the tyrannical overlords. Yes, uh, but it was more so like, I'm in Miami, mm. some bad stuff just happened to me. So I'll, I'll tell you a story. So my wife now, she she was my girlfriend at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm down on like South Beach and I don't know how familiar you are with Miami. Not the most familiar. South Beach is like dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's fun, don't get me wrong. Like they got all the clubs or like all the nightlife is down on South mm-hmm. Beach, most of it. And uh, so I parked. I parked uh, my god that had given me like an old Range Rover, so I'm driving this old Range Rover around. Mm-hmm. Whatever, uh, it's murdered out too, so it's nice. Like it's yeah. old, but it's like yeah. nice. And uh, I parked my car in this uh, parking garage. It's like a, a eight story parking garage, right? And mm-hmm. I'm thinking like, oh, I'll just park on, you know, the very top, and yes. nobody will. It's like barely anybody up here. So I park up there and then I go shopping for my wife or my girlfriend at the time, whatever. I go shopping and I'm with her friend, her best friend, still best friends to this day. And uh, we actually just talked about this like when she was visiting us. Mm. But so I I, we, I finished shopping and I'm walking back to uh, the car mm. and there's a red car like old beat up red Pontiac. Mm. Bro, I get robbed in Miami, bro. Oh, that was nice. like the that was like the catalyst of like me wanting to be like I want to protect myself like in that moment I I couldn't have done anything because I wasn't yeah. prepared or you know I hadn't you, you know you, ever concealed carry yeah right? your only option is becoming a meat missile yeah facts yeah. facts so like from that moment I was like yeah that'll never happen to me again mm. right so I think that was like the catalyst for me to be like more into like you know just protecting myself and then protecting my loved one. Yeah. I find with a lot of people, if they didn't grow up with it or maybe they were like hunting, like yeah. they have like a moment where it's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, that can happen to me. Even even the other day, I was gassing up at the gas station and I witnessed like a road rage incident. Like a car was chasing a motorcycle and I was just standing there watching. So they come around, cars chasing the motorcycle, they turn back around yelling at each other. And I was just watching and I was like, I had nothing like, like as a cop, you see situations, and then like even now, it's like it's okay, it's not my problem. Yeah, but it's like local PD's problem. Like I don't yeah. care. But like I had a gun in my pants. I'm like, oh, that gun feels so good. Yeah, like, for sure. Pants, you know, for sure. Just in case, like not my problem. I'm not gonna intercede. Like they're they're both grown men. For sure. It's like if they want to have a little fit, bout of fisticuffs or they want to have their duel, that's on them. Yeah, like, for sure. I, to each his own. We kind of see what happens when the good Samaritan interjects. It's like it it, it causes you more trouble. Oh, yeah. based off of our legal system, which is like, you know, if, if I mean, if it was a dude like yelling or berating like a pregnant chick, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to step in. But yeah, if it's two sure. grown men going at it, it's like, hey, either drive away or figure it out. Yeah, for sure. So it's for like, sure. it's always that feeling of like, oh, like at times I think people are like, oh, carrying a gun so uncomfortable until something until happens. You actually. And that full size decked out handgun in your pants feels so, it feels, it feels like a warm, baby. it feels like a warm little hug. For sure. Around my waistband. For sure. Yeah, I'd love it, dude. For sure. And you hit a, a point that I'm always about, like, protecting women and children. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah. Always. And like you said, two grown men, yeah. y'all do what y'all need to do. But if There's like a dude braiding a guy in a wheelchair. I'm going to step oh, in. Oh, yeah, you know, for sure. Like, for all right, sure. All right, hey. Like, the, the, the defend, sure. defend those that cannot defend themselves. No doubt. Outside of that, you're on your own. Yeah, you're, yeah. you got it. I'll let you handle that. It's like my, I have a rule where it's like I don't open the door for other grown men if it's just them. Oh, no. I'm like, hey, figure it out. Like, I don't care. Bro, I'll tell you a crazy story. So, you know, I'm from the South. I'm from mm. Georgia, deep Dixie, like mm. the heart of Georgia. Oh, way down South. Yeah, facts. And uh, like we open the door, hold the door for everybody's please and thank you. Yes, mm. ma'am. No, ma'am. Bro, I get to Seattle and everybody is like, why are you holding the door for me? Like, yeah, they just give you like this. It's weird in Seattle, bro. Oh, like, I love, I weird. love like. I, I met a lot of good people, a mm. lot of solid dudes in Washington, but like <laughs> Western Washington, the manners don't exist. They don't exist they at don't all. Don't exist. They're going like I've been to Seattle a bunch, been to the South a bunch. I will say every time I go to the South, it is it's like a breath of fresh air. Oh, like everyone is so polite. It's hot as hell, though. It's hot as it's very very hot, <laughs> very hot. <laughs> It's hot as ever in Georgia. 
It's yeah. Down I think top. one of my favorite memories in Georgia was I think I was there for a gun event. Mm-hmm. I was at a hotel and like uh, one of the black ladies working there was mm-hmm. like, oh, I'll get that for you, sugar. Dude, my 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 hierarchy of side, like psychological needs. You ever see that chart where it's like old old southerner calls you like sunny or something like that, and then it's like the the black lady calls you sugar. Like, dude, I didn't know how much I needed that. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, that, that made was, me feel good. Yeah, I was like, oh, thank you. Like that was nice. Yeah, for sure. That was nice. Bro, Georgia's the best state. Yeah, it goes Georgia, Arizona, whoever else. That's fair. That's right. I mean, you're biased. Yes. I think it's like Arizona. I don't know if Georgia's on my list just yet. I like Georgia a lot. Oh man. I like Georgia. Florida's a lot. up there too. Florida be if I like Florida's I would, probably yeah. three. If I didn't live in Arizona, it'd either be like Texas, Georgia, or Florida. Somewhere in the South, probably. I like the manners and you can get land. So Texas, I don't know if you can call Texas the South though. Texas is South ish. I think they fought uh, they fought for the South in the Civil War, I think. Barely. Yeah, barely. It was like the they, eastern, southeastern part of Texas. They, they were like, they were like, all right, I guess we'll, I guess we'll chip our hat in. Yeah, but Georgia, we were in it for sure. Oh yeah, oh well, yeah, we were deep in it. Oh yeah, yeah, I like history, bro. Yeah, you you, said, you were saying before we started, you majored in history. Yeah, so I, I like history major, and then I majored in like a uh, human and social development. So okay, I, it's, I don't know what what that's under but what's your what's your favorite historical topic or era mm. probably world war ii for sure mm. world war ii or the civil war american civil war yeah yeah those, those are some good ones i know and they're that's like the biggest chunk of like i feel like american history mm-hmm. that's like that's the only history that matters. A huge chunk of <laughs> shit. I mean, ah, the Civil War was. If I had to rank them, mm. it'd be like uh, the now the lead up to World War II was mm. like interesting. Very interesting. It was super interesting. A lot, a lot of interesting geopolitical dynamics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, man. But I'm just talking about strictly America, though. Yeah. Like how we were like running guns kind of. Mm-hmm. And uh like all while saying like yeah, we're going to be isolationists. We're, yeah. But we'll we'll give you guys supplies though. Yeah. Like the lend lease, like the, it, the Soviets don't ever show in their propaganda, but they had so much American equipment. Oh yeah. Like trucks and disarmament. Oh yeah. You should see what they have now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Even now, like during the Ukraine war, they're finding like a bunch of old Thompsons, mm-hmm. like 1928 Thompsons. Yeah. I saw that on Discord. Yeah. And it's like, hey, where do you think they got those from? For sure. Yeah. I'm surprised those still work. Oh, they'll they'll probably I mean if they're stored well, they'll work just yeah, fine. Ergonomics sure. of a Thompson suck. Like the stock when you when you they shoulder do. it, they not do. great. Hell one. And I'm like, uh yeah, I don't see how y'all use this. Yeah. And then the the bar. Yeah. The BAR is thick, dude. It's heavy as heck. You're good. You're strong, dude. Nah, but <laughs> carrying that for days on end, yeah. lugging that around. Could be another thing when it's like, plus kit, like carrying sucks until you have to you, start shooting it. And then, and then it feels really good. What what round is that? 30-06? 30-06, yeah. Think about that. They were using hunting rounds yeah. to shoot at people. With no armor. Holes this big. Oh, yeah. If you, if you smack someone, they're going down. Oh, yeah. Not even second guessing it. No. That's a, it's a big round. And then a lot of times they're using like armor piercing rounds too. Yeah. Oh, like 30 out 6 black tip. God. Oh, God. So it's like you're, you're just like, imagine like, <laughs> imagine a dude people. getting the drop on like a, a crowd or something and just dumps his BAR mag full oh, of black tip, God. dude. He's gonna like fall apart like he's in an Elysium movie. Yeah, for sure. Bro. What what uh theater do you think was was the hardest to fight in? I think Europe or the Pacific. I think the 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 German rush like the Ost Front would be mm-hmm. the gnarliest mm-hmm. human fighting in history. It was the largest. Mm-hmm. I think from the American perspective, for sure, the Pacific. Oh yeah. But like I listened to the Dan Carlin's like Ghost of the Ost Front podcast, mm-hmm. and it's gnarly. Yeah, I haven't. Bru- like you should check it out. Your history buff, you're gonna love it. Okay. Brutal fighting. Like the essentially, I think like the Germans had like the ideology of wiping the Bolsheviks off the face of the mm-hmm. planet. So there's the massive push, and then the Bolsheviks recover, and then just the fighting is is just absolutely like, biblical. Dang. 
I mean, like they go through, they're executing villages, they're, you know, raising the earth. And then the Russian, like the return of the Russians is just like uh, essentially, uh, I don't know if I can say it on YouTube, but like grape and pillage, you know? Oh, and yeah. Just getting, getting back at them. So it's, it's pretty gnarly they, fighting. They actually, like, in the beginning, like when Germany and I think it was, what is it, Germany? You've got uh, Russia hmm. or Soviet Union and Italy, like the Axis powers were made. Yeah. I really believe that Russia was like, as far as people go, they were like a huge army, but they were like the weakest because they didn't really have. Yeah. That one's that one's tough. I think it's a if you're going off that, it may be a toss between the Italians and the Russians. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Russians eventually, they came back and they came back with a vengeance. Oh, yeah. Like I said, when they came back, yeah, they were different. The problem is the Italians. I think the Ita- if I I could be wrong. I think the Italians messed up a lot for the Germans. Like I think that when, so. The Italians. I want to say they invaded Greece, and they then did. and then they messed up that invasion. So they had to pull German resources down there, mm-hmm. and they pulled away resources from the Eastern Front. Yeah. So it kind of messed up their like timing of stuff, and like it just like the Italians. The Italians, yeah. as far as fighting goes, were not the best. Like, I feel like, to me, I think the Italians would have been worse. I'm saying this as a half Italian, dude. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's I can like, dig it. It's like, I think they kind of wet the bed for the Axis powers, yeah. in a sense, and then they were kind of like the weakest link. You ever seen a show called uh, Man in the High Castle? I have, yeah. I haven't watched the entire series, but I watched some of it. That show is interesting. The alternate history out the wazoo, man. <sighs> Dang, what? <sighs> God, that'd be crazy. If, that would be nuts. That would be nuts. If we actually lost that war. Yeah, yeah. I think the only way it would be, too, dude, it'd be so hard oh for them to invade God. America. It'd be so especially hard. now. Like, yeah. if they even tried now, it'd be. That's what I'm saying. Like America, you, dude, you can't. You, an external military trying to conquer America. I love how you said external. Would have to. It would be so hard. Oh yeah. No Even doubt. like our own military. People were like, "You can't fight against." You know. Oh, I was thinking about some jets else or said. tanks. It's like, dude, it's. It, it would be so hard. The American citizen, dude, is they're crazy. We are. We are a level Arizona, of crazy. Georgia, Texas, yeah. Florida. Yeah, it's like all right. Say you push past the West Coast. West Coast will probably fall pretty quick. Yeah, California, Washington, Oregon. That's gone. That's that's if you get past it. You have to pull off uh, – logistically, you have to pull off a naval invasion. True. I mean, even if they get a foothold in Canada and they maybe move down. Like, they're, how, like how, dude? How? How are you going to pull this off? By the time you get to us, it's like we have the Rocky Mountains. We have – But you got to think. They have – it'd be hard to come by sea. Yeah. It'd be they, easiest to go by land mm. and think about what, we, what we've got down south. Yeah. And that whole situation. Yeah. They I mean, they, in, in theory, yeah, they could push through. But that's like if once, gotta, once they start moving troops, everyone, like everyone knows, oh, yeah. like all the intelligence agencies would see it. And this is kind of, I'm a very amateur on this subject. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking from like a, a total war gamer. Oh, yeah. Like I don't know if you ever play that franchise. Yeah. But it's like, oh, dude, like good luck because you have Intel assets if you're the United States everywhere. You know, pro- sure. they're probably listening to us through our phones right now, you know. <laughs> So it's like yeah. they they know what's moving no and what to act on. So even getting past our navy, which yep. is like better than the next best couple navy, countries yeah. combined, yeah, it's like best good luck. I mean, in, in theory, we're talking about China, like like essentially like a red dawn situation, like China, like North Korea, Russia, they all team up, right? Or even Iran too. They still have to deal with our navy. Even like even then the Canadians would be like, all right, yeah, we're hopping on this. We don't want we don't want any, anybody invading. Would you go full Wolverine? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, I'd go full Wolverine, like full partisan fighter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely wouldn't be trying to fight like uh, conventional tactics. Oh, oh it, it would be like hit no and doubt. run stuff. You know? Oh, of course, that's what they did in the movie. That's what, yeah, exactly. It's like I'm not I'm not trying to do a square conventional fight. Which Red Dawn do you prefer, the old school Red Dawn or the newest one? Old school for sure. Yeah, the old school one's way better. Yeah, the new one when they at the end they're like riding around a Mustang with a minigun. I'm like, all right, all right, yeah, yeah all, all right. right. You ruined it. The old one's fun, <laughs> dude. The old one is yeah. fun, and it feels like there's a level of like, ooh, there's stakes. Yeah, it feels for like sure. 
and they're playing in the height of the Cold War because sure. they're in the 80s. Yes. Like, it feels like, oh. Yes. The new one there would be like, North Korea invades. I'm like, I'm pretty sure North Korea or whoever else or the Russians and Chinese couldn't pull this off, dude. Yeah, nah. Like, that, that is a logistical level of achievement that would be crazy. Yeah, no doubt. When when the Americans invaded the uh, the European theater, I think that was the largest <laughs> amphibious invasion in human history. Yeah, D Day was crazy. Yeah, so it's like, and then that like that's like like that you're setting the stage for as the Americans and the Brits. It's like you now okay, finally you control the air. the The Germans have zero navy besides probably like subs floating around. But even then, yeah. it's like at that point, America owns the seas, and mm-hmm. then they can pull that invasion off. And and the Germans were tied up on the Eastern Front, so yeah. it's like not the cream of their crop is is not going to be in Europe, yeah, because they unless they're doing like reserve stuff, yeah. So it's like there's a lot of good factors that go into that. We're still at the height of our power. We're not tied up anywhere else. Fast. And this hypothetical, if they try to pull this off, they couldn't do it. Nah, it would like it, and, it's yeah. too. It's yeah, like you said, the logistics of it all it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, it's not happening. I don't even see how they could even think about doing that. No, they, they just use TikTok now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be going in a couple couple. That's concerning. Weeks. As much as I don't like TikTok, I think them banning it is just the Trojan horse from a bunch of other stuff. Mm-hmm. Explain that. So I think it's what Congress pushing forward a, <laughs> uh, the, like the proposition to ban TikTok. Yeah. Because it's like uh, a Chinese, you know. I mean, that is true, though. Oh, absolutely true. And I think TikTok has definitely been like a, ooh. Um, but the problem is it's still like a, a open source. Like you can say anything you want on it for the most, kind uh, of. You can't, you'll get banned for yeah. stuff, but it's still like a means of, like a, a platform for communication. Oh, yeah. And no so doubt. for them restricting a platform for communication, it's kind of like, wait, hold on. What is this going to open the door for other stuff? Kind of like the Patriot Act for surveilling your own citizens. It's yeah. like, wait, hold on. I thought we had the Fourth Amendment right. You know? So it's, it's concerning in that sense. I can I can get that. I, I'm tracking. Yeah. Dang, that would be crazy. But then, I just I just see it both ways. I guess. Yeah. Like I can see it from your perspective and your view. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, I'm like, yeah. China's China owns that. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's crazy. Like as an American, like mm-hmm. you're using a, a app that is giving your data, data to the Chinese. To, yeah. yeah. And that, that's just hard to, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I mean, people, it's like, essentially, right now, China is the, I would say, like, our global enemy number one, because they're doing pretty good. Like, the Russians are kind of on the decline, in my opinion. This is all, this is all yeah. opinion. Oh, this no, no, all, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not an expert. Yeah, because, you know, they'll they'll come after you for that. Yeah, so this is all, <laughs> strictly speaking, this is all, all yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah. But my guy doesn't want any problems, I promise. <laughs> he doesn't want any problems with anybody from Russia. I, I think the Russians are scary. Yeah. I respect the Russians. See? No problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pick a fight with some Ruski boys unless they come here and try and pick a fight with yeah, me. Yeah, then they'll have then, hey, what are you doing? It'll I'm not, be I'm not going popping. I'm I'm not going to Russia to pick a fight with you. Don't come like hey. All that other stuff's out they, the out the window. We can chill out and drink some vodka and have a good time. Yeah. For sure. For sure, but you step foot on this land, hey. Hey, different story. Different story. Hey, I get it. If we invade your country, <laughs> hey, do your thing. I yeah. get it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with you being in the league and being so into guns, was there ever like uh, them trying to hem you up for anything? Man, all the time. Really? Man, yes. They didn't like, uh, I would get like comments like, oh, posting all these guns. I hope you got a permit for them. I'm like... <laughs> Hey, buddy, it's called the Second Amendment. Exactly. And then, like, I'll tell you just a, a crazy story. Uh, so this is my second year in the league. Mm. Like, after a decent rookie season, COVID's popping off. Mm. Uh, I get, um like, an opportunity, like a venture capitalism opportunity. Mm. And I don't know how if you know how that works. Like, if you're coming on as to, like, a project and there's a board right Mm -hmm. and there's probably a board of like say five people Mm -hmm. and all five have to vote yes to bring another person on right and uh like man 
missed out on so much money. Damn. But uh, so all four of the, the like the men mm. on the board, it was one woman. All four of the men on the board vote yes to bring me on. Mm. And then this lady, she's like the number one anti-gun activist in Seattle, was on the board, and I didn't know that. And she asked me out. Dang. Yeah, bro, it was. My wife was pissed, pissed, pissed. Like <sighs> she, she doesn't even know who you are. Like she just sees you with these guns, and I would be pretty mad, dude. Oh, I was, I was, I was pissed, but. I like to think that, like, it just wasn't meant for me. Yeah, maybe it's not meant to be. Yeah, I don't like to align myself with people that don't really have the same, like, I wouldn't say beliefs as me, but beliefs as me. Mm. Like, I like to align myself with like-minded people or people who are, like, pushing the same way that I'm pushing. Yeah, makes sense. I feel like that's a very common trend. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it just, make, it just makes your life that much easier. Yeah, because then you don't have to deal with, like, hurting somebody's feelings mm. or like saying the wrong thing and then like they yeah. feel a certain way so just surround yourself with people that like the same stuff was your agent ever like hey maybe you shouldn't post about yes. it yet <laughs> yes he's like oh yeah uh i don't know if i don't know if nike will like do a deal with you because uh you got guns everywhere yeah and then i don't know like you you weren't following me back then but I had guns everywhere. Like mm -hmm. it was, I was posting guns nonstop. Like if it wasn't football, it was guns. Yeah. And like that's hey, that's that's pretty all American. Football and guns, man. For sure. That's as American as it gets. For sure, for sure. And that's that's what I like to, you know, that's what I pride myself on. Real American boy. Yeah. You know? And uh yeah, I caught flack for it, but I'm here now and yeah. I'm you made what? your peace with it. Yeah. Even if it's going to cost you potentially million, millions of dollars. It is what it is. It it'll is what it is. It'll come back. <laughs> it'll come back. I'm not You'll too worried good, about yeah. it. It'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's nuts. It makes me so mad on your behalf. Yeah, bro. It's all good, bro. I'm not tripping. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> <sighs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, it is what it I is. I am curious, like, because I, I would assume it's – I know it's very hard to get into the league. Oh. And then once you get there, there's the opportunity for building your brand. Mm -hmm. Am I am I wrong? No, you're right. So you get that, and then it's like people taking away opportunities because it's like, hey, we have this l very legal thing that we can partake in, and it's part of our constitution, but there's so much pushback publicly against it from uh, from a lot of sectors. Yeah, and they are 15 is like the most – demonized demonized mm -hmm. thing in our society you should have gone into like black powder or something oh get some muskets no one no one bad and i've actually got like two of them you got two muskets yeah. nice dude yeah but yeah like the ar-15 especially on the west coast yeah like minus us and mm -hmm. you know a few others but yeah, like, like all those states have been like no ar-15s you have to yeah and this was like this was like around the time when that when I got X'd out of that uh that uh opportunity, mm. this was around the time where Washington was uh like voting towards banning yeah. the thirty round magazine. Oh my gosh. And then bro, you know what's crazy? They went from like banning the thirty round magazine to like banning like a shit ton of like you Are can't you even... saying that them encroaching small <laughs> small restrictions leads to more restrictions? <laughs> Man, but we knew that though. Oh yeah, we know that. We knew that. If you we, give them an inch, they'll try and take a mile. I know. And then, bro, everybody, I remember like everybody's like, oh, the ten, we're gonna only have ten rounds. I'm like, I know about y'all, but I know what I got. Yeah. If I, I if if I had to, in theory, bend the knee to the to the government like that, I'm just gonna get M1 grand. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure with 30 out six black tip yeah eight, then, eight, it's not an assault weapon it's a hunting rifle facts you know you got your eight round in block clip loaded with 30 round or 30 out six black tip dude pretty spicy no doubt it won it won one world war shoot heck yeah you know that's crazy we're two and oh two and oh man two and oh let's see if we can go three and oh good season so far uh i don't know I mean, if we don't count, like, the other proxy wars, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. I was about to say. Yeah, Vietnam wasn't, like... I think we did pretty good in Vietnam. We just... We did. 
the way we pulled out, not yeah. great. I think we did pretty good in Afghanistan. The way we pulled out, mm-hmm. not great again. Yeah, more helicopters. Always or comes down more... to leadership. All right, I think our I think our troops do really good. Oh yeah, for sure. Hey, love the I, troops. I'm do always great. I'm always a hundred percent with the troops. Mm. Always, I'm actually going to Poland with the USO. So that's pretty. What, what are they going to have you do? I don't know. I'm just going along for the ride. Are they going to like make you play football or something? Shoot, probably. Just absolutely smoke them. Yeah, that'd be tough. They probably got a whole bunch of athletes in in the army. I, yeah, they have. To. I mean, or they got some pretty athletic military. dudes. Yeah, my brother's actually in the army now. Oh no, Ken. Yeah, I think his MOS is uh, eleven Charlie. Okay. So he's a mortarman in the oh. infantry. Yeah, it's my boy. Yeah, my little brother, man. Mort- mortar guys are scary. Oh, no, he's becoming like a. Every time I see him, I'm like, damn, this dude is changing. <laughs> he's gonna come out like. Yeah, everyone everyone thinks they're tough when they got like their rifle, and then like, all right, oh, I'm, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna win this gunfight until yeah. some dude with a mortar shows up. You're like, oh crap, man! They can just drop ordnance right on my head. Doom. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, but he he likes it. He's he's loving it right now. He's like, yeah, man. I think I'll do 20 years. Dang. I go, all right. That's a bold <laughs> statement, man. Go ahead. If you. If I remember I was. Like I remember you. being a cop and I was looking at 25 years to retire and I was like, I don't. I don't know if I got this in me. <laughs> I really hope this YouTube a, thing works you get out. A, as a as a cop, like you get a a bad a bad like rap. Yeah, I mean, there's a and it, you worked you worked around. Yeah, I worked on a I worked on the Indian reservation. Oh man, yeah, but cops get a bad rap. Yeah, I, de- I definitely think like there's so many interactions they have. Mm-hmm. Usually, all go pretty well. Yeah, and then they have a few bad interactions. Everyone's like, oh. I definitely think there's a culture in law enforcement that is too much of always like looking for stuff. Like as like, far as what? So it's like always pushing citizens that you don't need to. It's like, all right, hey, you got a call for a dude just chilling in his car. You roll up, hey man, we got a call. Like they like the people were said you look suspicious. I'm just checking on you. It's like, you want to give me your info? It's like, no, I don't. It's like, all right, cool, have a good one. Dang, instead of, that's instead of that like, simple. Instead of trying to push it, it's like, hey, it's like you, like you don't like people. I think a lot of times cops try and push it too much when it's like, hey, this dude has a right to refuse to talk to you. Like, he, if he's not being detained, he doesn't have to identify himself. Like, people have rights. Your job is to uphold their rights. You're just a referee for society. Dang, I never even looked at it like that. Like, it's like, hey, it's it's pretty simple. A referee I mean, for society. That's, that's You're showing up, hey. That's a good analogy. No, I mean, it, it's, you don't have to do too much until you do. Yeah, yeah, you I mean, don't have to throw the flag until like it's yeah, it's like hey, if they committed. I mean, a, in theory, it's like yeah. if someone else is infringing on someone else's rights, mm-hmm. right? It's a crime. Yes. So then you have to go enforce that. Yeah, for if sure. If someone's if someone's on my private property and oh, I like yeah. if in say they're trespassing, but they I don't have a reason to shoot them, it's like yeah. I'm gonna call the cops. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna, let, can, I'm gonna let them handle that. it. Yeah, but you know, like in the past, how many years since COVID? Four years, mm. five years. I think cops have have gotten a, a bad rap. Oh yeah, the the law enforcement zeitgeist has been very demoralized since yeah. since 2020, since the the COVID and then the George Floyd stuff. Yeah, very very demoralized. Like I remember when I was trying out, there was probably over a hundred people you trying had to try out. out for the. Yeah, yeah. Schools? So you you show up, you do your physical stuff, super easy. <laughs> oh, that's it. And then you do the written stuff, and then if you pass that, you'll go through like hiring boards. And like background <clears throat> interviews, lie detector tests. Um, oh dang! So you like you go through like the ringer, and then what do they like, ask you on a lot de- a, a lie detector? Test? Oh, like uh, just like have you ever committed crimes? Like certain crimes, you've ever like uh, committed bestiality stuff like that. Um, oh, like doing with doing the dirty with the animals. Oh, they ask you <laughs> that? What the it's heck? happened, dude. I've heard what? all sorts of stories where like they hired a cop. And like they're going through the interview, they're like, all right, is there anything else you want to tell us? And he's like, um, yeah. And he's like, like I think it was some like line of bestiality or something like that. And they're like, okay, I'll be right back. And they're like, all right, you're fired, dude. Like it's wow, it exists for a reason, bro. Because, that is that is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's nasty. Yeah, it is, dude. I think there was even a firefighter here in Mesa that got caught for like bestiality. What the? F- yeah, bro. 
It takes a di- it takes something loose in the brain to be like, yo, that extra sheep, loose. That you you got that sheep be... is looking looking supple today. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> like, no, what? no that's way. That's a whole different. That's a whole different line of like I don't get it, dude. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, they ask you that on a lot. So they time. they ask, they ask you everything. Like like so they're trying to. And then so you you go and do that, and mm-hmm. then you go to the hiring board, what does that consist of? Like a whole bunch of interviews? Yeah, so I think you sit before a board between like different officers on the hiring board, mm-hmm. and then, all right, you ask, answer all their questions, and then, okay, cool, you wait to hear back. All right, hey, you're hired on. We're going to send you to the academy. So then you go to the academy where it's like they're essentially putting you through that the, it? Uh, there's, there's a few. There's like Phoenix. There's a sheriff's office academy. I went to the sheriff's office academy mm-hmm. for Maricopa County. There's that one. I think uh, like other agencies like Mesa or Gilbert have their own. Mm-hmm. So they go through all that, and they're just essentially looking for a reason to be like, "All right, you don't pass it." So I don't know how it is now, but like back when I was in, it was like, "All right, like if you mess up, you're fired." So they oh, they reach that a cutthroat. They, yeah, it's pretty cutthroat. They reach a certain point though where they're like, "All right, Bro, that's like the NFL." Yeah, yeah. It's like they're kind of like looking for a reason to get rid of you. And then, and then after you go through the academy, you go through FTO, but you're still like on a year probation. Mm-hmm. So you got to wear the long sleeve. Uh, I don't think the uniform mattered as much as like you just can't mess up. Oh, okay. So it's like when you're on probation, it's like you're still like there's you're still very easily fireable. But once you get off probation, then it becomes a hassle to get rid of you. Damn, it, it's hard to get rid of government That's like employees. The NFL, bro. Does the NFL have like a probation Cut, period or anything? Cutthroat. No, that's like being a rookie. Yeah. So, like, as a rookie, like, they're looking for every reason to yeah. replace you. Jeez, dude. Is yeah. it like even, like, personal life stuff? Or oh, just, yeah. Yeah. Man, we had a... So, COVID, COVID was crazy, bro. Mm. COVID was wild. We had a guy... So, Pete Carroll had a rule, like, nobody in the hotel, like, no outsiders in the hotel. Mm. And then this one dude cut his career short before it even started. Had a girl in there, mm. got caught. Like our security guards, cool as heck. Shout out to George, but mm. or I don't play there anymore. But he's my guy. Uh, he catches the dude and gives the dude a chance. Like, oh, just tell the truth. Like, who is this? Yeah, I didn't have anybody. Uh, uh and then it's just like, psh, yeah, lying, lying's a no go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just uh, be honest. You probably still would have. Yeah. Had a chance. I feel like most dudes have been like, all right, you brought a girl over. All right. It like, is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. If you're going to lie about it, though, different different character level. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The, the line is you can. Yeah. yeah. That's where you draw the line. Mm. But, bro, back to, like, police having, like, having it bad. So I've had a whole bunch of encounters. Yeah. Like with with police officers like in Washington, because mm. I'm a speeder. Like yeah. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like mm. I had, a, I used to have a Kia Stinger. Like when they first came out, like the GT2, and I used to try to push it to see how fast I could go. <laughs> there was this hill. There mm. was this hill, and uh, like right before I got to like uh the practice facility in Seattle, and I tried to just gun it as fast as I could. Yeah, but I got up to like. 130, 140. Yeah. Yo, they'll, they'll they'll put you in jail for that speed. <laughs> oh yeah, but I was like, ah, I, you know, I was you're just, you're just I was, cruising. I'm yeah. right here from work. Yeah, the dude was like, yeah, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give you a ticket. Yeah, I don't have you on the radar, but I know you were going fast. So he just that got was good. Uh, okay. I was yeah. So I was <laughs> like, cool. As long as I don't go to jail, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. So bro gave me a bro gave me a ticket. I hired a lawyer and got that dismissed. Yeah. And then I think my my second time, uh, I so then I got a truck mm. and I'm going through a construction zone and I jumped the like uh you ever seen like the so if traffic is going this way mm. and they have to make a left turn into like your lane. Mm. They had the little divider. Mm. I jumped the divider and then jumped back over so I could like avoid the construction site. Yeah. Freaking state trooper. I love the state troopers. Like they never give me any. He was yeah. just like, what's going on? Yeah. I'm like, hey, I tried to avoid them. But they in the yeah. way. The construction people. So no ticket. And I had my son in the back. Yeah. 
He was like, oh, he was talking to my son and stuff. And then uh, I think the third story from like Washington is I got my truck broken into. Yeah. And like, bro, when I say like the officer is like, found my, I had, so this was like, probably like two hours after I left the range. Mm. Got back, parked my truck, went up the shower, came back to the car. Windows shattered. Windows shattered. Gun, guns gone. Mm. Staccato's gone. <laughs> yeah, bro. I was like, dang, I'm in the hole four thousand mm. dollars, just like that. And then that's when I really started like being more responsible because I should have probably just not yeah. been lazy and just took them all in the yeah in the house. But bro, the police, like King County Sheriff's Office, mm. uh. Renton PD, uh, Bellevue PD, were it was like they were working like around the clock, and they found like two of my guns. Nice. Yeah, I probably still won't use them. I'll probably just. Yeah, that's that's. I find like that can, that can be rare where it's like, all right, I guess they're gone. They never found a staccato though, cause that. Yeah, that thing. It's you know, gone. That's gone it's, to the wind. Yeah, that sucks. Somebody's got a nice gun though. Hey, good for that guy. Yeah, you can thank yeah, DJ good on, for your good staccato. On you. yeah. Good on you, brother. I mean, I would be pretty pissed, dude. That's why oh, it's like, I like the idea of a truck gun, but I don't like the idea of my truck gun walking off because mm -mm. breaking windows are pretty easy. Yeah, we don't we don't have it too bad down here. No, but in down deep in Phoenix, you will. Yeah, that's why it's like I. Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm not leaving anything of value in my car. Oh uh, no, nah. that's not happening. No, nah, but yeah, man, I I really don't I really don't dislike the police. Yeah, I mean, Even I know like like a lot of. Black people do. Yeah, I mean that can be a thing. I know there's a big racial tension. Like you ever oh, see yeah. like on the shows where it's like you're watching a show and then like uh the cops talking to the black dude, he's like, Is, is this guy bothering you, sir? Oh yeah, 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 is, yeah. Is yeah. this black man <laughs> bothering you? <laughs> like in Hollywood, it's like dog, that never happened. Bro, yeah, that that doesn't that doesn't happen. Like, yeah. Even in the South, like, bro, we don't the police are like chill. Yeah. Like yeah, because the, the cops job. know it's like, hey, if you're chill, they'll be chill. Yeah, if you're coming off like just... an a-hole, they're gonna they're gonna raise up their cortisol. You're gonna make them stressed out if you come out stressed out. Because if you're not aware, when the cops show up, people already are stressed out, like oh, just like yeah. their existence. See, I get pulled over. I'm already knowing I'm, what I'm getting pulled over for. I'm like, yeah. ah, that, that time I was speeding, I'm like, damn. Yeah. I might be going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, all right. First, okay. it's a first time for everything, right? I, I hope his radar is not working. Yeah. So, did you calibrate your radar today? Oh, I, I watch uh, like sometimes like YouTube shorts. Yeah, and that'll come up. And like if somebody's speeding, oh, it was this one guy who like speeds all the time. He just yeah. doesn't care, and uh, he's driving a like a, a Lamborghini Urus, mm. and he's speeding. The cop pulls him over, and he's got like four friends in the car, and he's like, ah. Uh, the guy let him off with a warning. Yeah. And he was cool. Like, I guess he was driving through, like, Arkansas or something. Yeah. And a uh, country black dude comes up to the window, police officer. He's like, uh, yeah, you, you know I pulled you over? Oh, let me guess. Speeding? Oh, yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> he gets into it. And then at the end of the, the stop, he's like, oh, uh, yeah, is your radar calibrated? And he's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's calibrated every morning. Every morning it's, it's calibrated. Every morning. I'm like, dang! I should have used that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good I should have used use. that. Yeah. yeah, because the cops are supposed like before your shift, they're supposed to calibrate their radar. Like they have like these special tuning forks. Oh, you used to have to calibrate yours. So yeah, I'd, I'd calibrate mine. But then there's some days where you don't. You're like, ah. Yeah, it's like all right, I know I'm not running traffic stops today because it's gonna be like uh, we're going to DV after DV kind of thing. It's, oh, it's like, dang! So it's like all right, and like towards the end of my career, I got really like annoyed writing tickets because I want to go to traffic court. Oh, I, I was working like graveyards or swings. So it's you like you used if, to have to go to court. For yeah. That? So, I mean, if you write a ticket and then they you want gotta, to go to court, you got to go. And then they're going to be like, all right, I got pulled over for this. This is the well, cop you don't that show pulled up. you over. Then they get let off. So, I mean, if they don't show up, I write them in this, not even show up. Like, ah, whatever. Yeah. Or then what happens? What happens to you? Nothing. It's, it's all like it's, it's, a, it's, it's technically it's civil. So the cop can write you a civil traffic. If it's criminal, right? If you like for criminal speed. Mm hmm. Then it's like, all right, you're either going to take them to jail or they have to show up to court. They're also warrant for their arrest gets issued. So, dang. But if it's like civil, like if you're going like, if, you, if some a cop writes you a ticket for like ten over, you show up to court. They don't show up. You're gonna be like, hey, can I face my accuser? And there's no cop there. Judging like dismissed. 
dang, he would have got me. I would have went to jail, bro. Yeah. Dang. So that's the thing. If like you're committing a like crime, it's like, all right, he's got to take you before a judge. So this is like one thirty six. Dang, I'm. Oh, you gotta say allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, this is one thirty. One thirty six. Your man. Honor, my client, like a forty five. That's kind of fast, dude. That is. That car was. <laughs> that car was nice. And then I was like, dang, Kia makes a sports yeah. car. So I tried it out, and it was fast. It was fast, especially hey, using job, the. Kia. Using the paddles, mm -hmm. just cooking, dude. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm curious, dude. Are, would you, with you being a a pro baller, does that get annoying if I say that? Okay, good, because I was gonna keep saying it. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> just, so you being a pro baller, I, I see like the the pop culture around it, where like the girls like start throwing themselves at you. Did you ever get any of that? That doesn't start just in league. Really? Is that, that like starts, a college thing too? Mm. -mm. Goes back even further than that. You mean high school? Yes. It started in high school. Like, you got to think. High school, so this is how it works. Okay. You know, you get rankings mm. and, mm. like, top players in the country, whatever. Yeah. Right? And then, like, top players in the state. So I was ranked, like, the number three athlete. So, like, I had an athlete tag in, in mm. college or high school because I played multiple positions. And, uh, yeah, you get a – that – that matters. Yeah. And then, like, you play good. You get, Girls start noticing. Yeah. I don't know. So my experience, my experience, like, it, it wasn't like, um, it's like, yeah, you're you're like a football player. But, but the, football is king in, in the South. That's what I'm saying. So it's like in Arizona, it's not necessarily like football is king. It's just like, all right, you have like these kids playing football, and then that's part of like, it's, it, it's not like the stereo, like for me, my high school experience wasn't like the the stereotypical, like, these are your jocks. They run the school. It wasn't like that. It was oh, we like, ran, we ran, bro, I think my senior year, my sophomore mm -hmm. year, I stopped paying for a lot of stuff. My junior year, we went to state. I was that's the year I started playing quarterback full time. Mm -hmm. Didn't pay for like stuff in 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 my town, the town up north from me, the town yeah. south of me. Didn't pay for much. I People played football looking. in the wrong state, dude. <laughs> yeah, you did. I played. I played you ball did. in the wrong state. Cause in the south, bro, football is king. Yeah, football is king. We don't really care about basketball. Yeah, uh, we have basketball players. Like you get sure. basketball states in the south, like North Carolina. Mm. You know, North Georgia, some parts of Tennessee, but Florida even. But in all of those states, it's one sport that kind of will make a make a, a conversation mm. and like have a real heated conversation. You just you go to you go to any barber shop or any like sports bar and you ask what state has the best football? What mm. what state produces the best football players per capita. What state do you think it is? It's Georgia, for no, sure. Kid. Yeah, <laughs> it's Georgia, and I'm yeah. biased. I'm, yeah. I don't care who Florida produced. I don't mm -hmm. care who Texas produced. I don't care who South Carolina or Alabama produced. I know the guys that we got in Florida. If there was like a, a all-star game, and they said yeah. all the pro players from Georgia and all the pro, we win. Really? Yeah. What do you think it is? Just built different. Dang. And then our football is like well rounded. Yeah. Like Florida, Florida's known for speed guys. Mm -hmm. Texas is known for, you know, big, big dudes. Like they're mm -hmm. just known for naturally like physical specimens because they produce some, some guys. Uh, Alabama's, they're known for whatever. They're like not even a powerhouse state. But then like uh, Georgia, we're known for everything. We've produced. Heisman winners. Mm -hmm. We've produced Super Bowl champions. We've produced NFL MVPs. Mm -hmm. So like, we've got everything. Uh, well, Ray Guy Award winners, uh, Raglan Award winners. Like, we've produced linemen, receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, DBs. You name it. Legends too. Hall of Famers. I yield. <laughs> I yield to the Georgia prowess. <laughs> Not to say that other states haven't, but ours are better. I feel you just have more, you just have more of them. Yeah, nah, they probably got more, but we've got better quality. So where'd you go to college after high school? Miami. Into Miami. The U. What, so it's Miami College. Mm -mm. What is it? University of Miami. University. Okay. So down in yeah. South Florida. 
And then, so you go to college. Florida's my second home, so like. Gotcha. Yeah. You knocked out. You knocked out college, and then you got picked up by the NFL. Yeah, picked up to. I got drafted to Seattle in the fourth round. All right. What year did you get drafted? Twenty twenty. So 2020. COVID year. Dang man, how old are you? Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. You're a freak of nature. Uh, I try to be. <laughs> I try to be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I like to say like oh, I'm regular. I tell everybody like mm-hmm. I'm a regular dude. I just work hard. Yeah. That's really it. Dang man, what was your? You feel my man? What was your forty time? Like a four or five. Jeez, man, that's and how, slow. And how, and how much? Well, how much do you weigh? Like right now? Yeah, like two twenty nine. Two twenty nine, man. Yeah, bro, that's a lot of mass moving that quick. Oh yeah, for sure. People don't like to tackle me. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, people don't like to tackle me. I think it's too much. You know, does meat missile coming down yeah. range? And, I, do and I'm not I'm not do- dodging any contact. No. <laughs> it's like I said before, it's you, it's you versus me. Hill, yeah. dude, it's you versus me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta we gotta see who's who's been working out, who's been yeah. in the gym. Yeah. That's crazy. Or who's dude. got that heart. Yeah. How much how much do you work out throughout the week? And then like how long do you typically work out for? So it's five days a week, mm. nine to twelve. So five days a week, you're working out three hours? Yeah. Dang. And then, like, not counting, like, the like the back-end cardio that I mm-hmm. do. So, like, just, like, later out the, throughout the day, like, I'll get, like, some jump rope in or mm. I'll go on a walk or I'll go run. And, you know, just trying to burn more calories than, Dang. than I take in. Bro, bro does not quit, dude. Bro does no. not quit. And then, shoot, some days it's like work out, mm. hit the range afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Have you found that with your athleticism, doing like shooting drills and stuff, how does it feel? Like, have you noticed in sort of like translation? A lot of the stuff that a lot of like, and we've shot before, mm-hmm. and like a lot of the stuff that, uh, like say if if we had a drill where uh had to run and like, run and then turn and shoot mm. like that that feels natural to me yeah so the reason i bring it up is like within the gun tactical space mm-hmm. right when you're talking online with other guys dudes will bring up like really niche nuanced stuff it's like okay so if i'm doing a drill and i'm facing one way and i need to step off to move to the next station to shoot which foot do i step off with and then how do i or it's like dude just be at like just just run like what do you mean like there's like you're overthinking it. That's never been like a thing for me. Like I, yeah. like I I train with a, uh, I don't know if you know Brent. I think I know Washington. Yeah. Okay. So I train with him. Like st- that's how I got my start. Like he mm. was who kind of gave me a baseline and like just running drills with him. Like all of that stuff felt easy. Yeah. It was all easy. Like. I do this every day. Yeah, like, I, yeah I, run, I run drills all the time. So you just add a gun into it. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. Just add that extra bang, bang. And I feel like a lot of times guys will like, they don't have an athletic background like in any way. So they overthink it. So they overthink it. It's like, yeah. hey, man, you're just, just be athletic. Like this is why we, this is why I talk about working out so much. It's like, hey, like, yeah, guns are cool, but they're nothing without your, your meat chassis to carry them. Mm-hmm. So that's why you got to hit the gym. Yeah, and and that's that's what kills me. Like a lot of guys, like they, oh man, yeah, I can still carry whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, okay, so what what comes the day that you're like in your front yard, mm-hmm. some guy just comes and you gotta wrestle him, or you gotta yeah. like use your physicality to move this man mm-hmm. or this person, like. What happens then? Oh, no, bro. I, I'm more concerned about my 12-5 versus 13 set. It's like, oh, okay, all right. Or what happens when, like, like everybody likes to say, oh, when shit hits the fan. But what happens, like, if that does happen mm. and you've got to, like, move some shit or you got to, like, carry or you got to wear your kit for real. Yeah, you got to wear your kit nonstop. And then chances are you probably have, like, diarrhea or something, too. So you're just, gotta, you're just crapping your brains out. And you're to, hungry. Yeah. You're tired. Bro. Uh, a lot of people don't don't lift. Favorite lift. What is it? Dude, I have fallen in love with Zercher stuff. Ooh, Zercher. Zercher 
is good. I like Zercher. I for have, sure. I have fallen in love. I was doing a. Do you follow Tom Haviland? Of course. That dude's a freak. He's a I saw him beast. doing Zercher cleans where he Zerches it up, catches it, racks it, and then overhead presses him. So I try, I was trying that out. I can only do it like for now, like 135. But I watched him do it with like 405. Dude's like a T eight hundred. He's no, he's he's different. He is he is built different, dude. He's different. It's like a quiet my phone. I hear it vibrating over here. Yeah, he's he's different. He's and then he works out in like the little Yeah, he the, looks like he's ready to go fishing. Yeah. And his five elevens, his tactical boots, and Bro, then like his his like He's uh, different. He that dude's a free. I follow him and like some mornings I turn on his stuff and like just while I'm in the shower, mm. like just scroll. Like, I, I get look him at ready his for stuff the workout. And I, and I get sad. Cause it's like even if ah. I, even if I like start juicing and I get the strongest I ever will be, it, dude, you you telling me I, I I don't think I'll ever be able to like zerch or clean four oh five racket and then overhead press it. Oh uh, yeah, nah. Like that I watched that and I was like, oh my God. I think after I, I get done with playing ball, I want to go freaking power lift. Yeah. What's your favorite lift right now? Probably deadlift. Really? Yeah. I PR'd on deadlift the other day. What'd you hit? 555. 555 deadlift. No, yeah. Doing no sumo? Mm-mm. Yeah. Straight. I feel like sumo's cheating. Yeah. That's just piss poor you do sumo. Yeah, it's like you stretch, you like you watch them, they stretch their legs out super wide, and then they like lift the bar up, and it's only like a few, like it feels like a very small range of motion. Oh, it definitely is. Mm. But I feel like, uh, I mean, it has its place. Sure. Has its place, but like for it to count and for you to actually have like a yeah a PR, you need to do yeah. If you told me like oh deadlift. I PR'd my deadlift, it's like oh did it you was do sumo? sumo? Yeah, yeah. It's like ah oh, uh, that doesn't, no, doesn't count. count. Doesn't count. That doesn't count. Yeah, man. It'd be like it'd be like saying I PR'd my leg press. It's like what? Oh, you still leg press? No, I don't leg press at all whatsoever, dude. You squat? I was so I I've eased up on squatting even. Why? I was having, like, my knees would hurt. So, like, I had knee pain, and I was like, you know, I'm going to ease off of squatting, but I'll hit the like sled. Like, front of the knee or? Like, like, yeah, like, front of the knees. Like, just, like, for, like, no reason. Like, I shouldn't have knee pain at 27. And I was like, why do I have knee pain? Because I used to squat all the time. You're only 27? Yeah. I've been aged by life, dude. I, I wouldn't have guessed you were 27. <laughs> do I look old? No, I would have guessed, like, 29. I'll take it. All right, cool. But no, so I was like my like my knees were killing me, so I mm. eased off like squatting. We're like, literally, like close in age. Yeah, we're pretty close. We're pretty we're pretty close. That's crazy. Dude. So we were playing high school ball at the same time. Uh, I mean, well, you're twenty, so you're you're two years behind me. So you graduated in twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So chances are, yeah, we were technically we could have been playing high school ball together. Dang. Thank God I didn't have to go against you, dude. Nah, you would have. We would have been great teammates. That'd been fun, man. We would have been great teammates. I don't know I, how good your middle I, linebacker was. I pro- but. Yeah, our middle linebacker, he was uh, he's pretty good. Mm. He was pretty good, but I just pride myself on being like a a good teammate. That's good. Yeah, I had, I loved it. Yeah, I, had, so, I had a blast. It's always team before. You me. Got, you got to be careful talking about like high school football, though. You know, as a grown like a grown man, you don't want to sound like Uncle Rico from. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, from yeah. Uh, uh, what is it? Napoleon Dynamite. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to sound like, like <laughs> Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite talking about yeah. your, old, your good old days. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But it, it's kind of different. I mean, yeah. Being in the league, I mean, that's your that's my resume. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's the resume. So like we we go at it in locker rooms all the time. But mm. you're right. I kind of I've slowly but surely been forgetting uh forgetting high school ball. I think. I, if, if I was to reminisce, I think my favorite thing in general was like my fresh, like my high school used to suck. Mm-hmm. Like freshman year, we would get crapped on like almost every game against all of our Damn. other like normal teams. I never felt it. Yeah. So you, were, you guys were always just like a powerhouse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's pretty sick. <laughs> yes. We were not. So we were not. By our senior year, we ended up like we made it to the playoffs. We lost in the playoffs, but we went 10 and 2. Okay. And we had a really good senior year. Yeah. So, like, shout out to our head coach, dude. Like, he turned our team around. Yeah. But yeah, that, that I remember like soft or freshman, sophomore, junior I year. I think the worst season I've had was 8 and 4. That's still a pretty good season. Yeah, but that was a terrible season. We lost in the first round of the playoffs. Dang. And then the year after that, we went 10 and 2, mm-hmm. lost in 
the second round of the playoffs. Yeah, we lost the second round of playoffs. And then too. the year after that, we went fifteen and one. Yeah. Or fifteen and two, counting we lost at state. Yeah. And then the year after that, it was my last year. I forget. We went like thirteen and two. Lost. Dang. Lost it like the round right before state. Oh, who do you think you guys would beat the guys at one state? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's just one of those games where it just for sure just everybody got hurt in the game. So, yeah, uh, you know that's the crazy thing about football, man. It's like anything can happen. I know. That's still like now, mm-hmm. like, but that's with anything though. Any profession, I feel like even even in your old profession, yeah. Anything, anything can happen. That now that's a true like that anything can that, happen. But that's crazy though. Like, think about it. You you went through it. Yeah. Like every time you approach somebody's car, like you got to think like, am I going to come home? Yeah, my so I mean a lot of that is. Is it true that y'all touched the back of the car? For so you? yeah, so that was a that was a thing that wasn't necessarily a thing by the time I got there. Okay. That was a thing back when there was like no body cams or maybe even dash cams. Yeah. Like they would, pr- they would have their prints on the mm-hmm. car to trace them back. But yeah. then once everyone had body cams and dash it just, cams, it's like you're already there. So you already called it out. You already mm-hmm. called out a traffic stop. You had the license plate, of the vehicle to make. Like why would you need to touch it? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's like oh, I guess you you can. To me, it's like they even. I think there was even like a thing where it's like if you're touching it, you're kind of like positioning yourself in a bad spot for the approach, because essentially a traffic stop is just mobile CQB. Yeah. So you're clearing a yeah. structure. Like as you approach a vehicle, so it's like you want to have yourself in a good position. Typically, like if I was gonna do a traffic stop, I'd go passenger side approach. Oh, I was just about to ask that. Yeah, so it's like because if someone wanted to really shoot me in the face, it's like this is way easier to do than like you you can see their arms swinging around. Yeah, for sure, it gives you a, a mm. quick probably like point five of a yeah. second to. And it's draw like you, you can then... always move back. So if someone like once you once you move back behind. Where they're sitting, you're you're gonna have a good angle on them. Yeah, so it's sure. like they have to commit at a certain point of your threshold. Yeah. So it's all that all that nuanced stuff. But like, yeah, that I mean, the cop job is is crazy because anything can happen. Yeah. Like that, it's, it's society with no rules, and like you are the ones that any job with a firearm mm. or like any first responder job, like military, firefighters, yeah. even even EMTs. Like I've seen some videos from Cali to where like EMTs are like. They throw him down or something? Yeah, like Damn. this one EMT dude, uh but uh yeah, it was like a drug thing and uh like the the EMT guy started like overdosing on like the Ooh. Yeah, and they're like giving him Narcan and Narcan, stuff. Narcan, Narcan. Yeah. But like that's still dangerous, like Yeah. It is I mean it's it's definitely You never know, uh, like we said. You never know. You never, you never know. know. My thing was like I always because they would you would train just about like everything. That's the fun part about like the law enforcement job is it's like you you have the chance to encounter just about everything. What was what was the worst call you've gone on? Uh worst, or like the the craziest, not like worst, like as far as like seeing some crazy shit. But like, uh craziest. Craziest. <laughs> like the most unique. Let's put it that way. <sighs> there there is a worst call that always comes to mind, but I guess I don't have to, I don't have to answer that, so that's nice. But craziest. I'll ask you about it later, like as far as oh, like yeah. the other one. Uh, no, the craziest, it was, it was so, this, it, like it wasn't hectic, but I think it, it always makes me laugh when I think about it. Mm-hmm. I was, I was going, like it was a night shift, driving along, call kicks out, it's a tone. So it's like, mm-hmm. boop, someone's been shot at this address. Dang. So I'm driving and I look at the map to check and the address is literally like where I'm driving to right now. Like it's on the way. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, the tone kicks out and then it's like, all right, I'm here. Like that's how fast I was there. Dang. So like I get there and it's totally quiet. And it's at nighttime too, like on a reservation. So it's like uh, no one else is around. Oh. Yeah. So I'm like I'm like standing there. I have my lights on to face the house. I Not grab my lie. rifle and I'm like, all right, I'm at the house. I'm waiting for some backup to start clearing it. And then a dude walks out. He's like, he's like kind of hurt and he walks out. He's like, ah, sir, I've been shot. I'm like, no, uh, like I'm looking at him. Yeah. He looks pretty chill. So he ended up getting shot by a 38 special. Oh, I, I think it was. I think it was like an MMP 38 special. Like a dude meant to shoot him in the head, but the, I think the dude was high on meth, so he missed. So oh, <laughs> he got him in the man. shoulder. 
That is so, crazy. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, nah, dude, you didn't get shot. And I check his shoulder. I'm like, oh yeah, he, he for sure got yeah, shot. Yeah, you got shot for sure. So then I was like, all right, do I go through my tourniquet or do I wound pack it? But then fire like was already kind of coming. Mm-hmm. And so fire shows up. I'm still holding on the house. By now, more guys have showed up to help yeah. like kind of like hold the house because we have no idea where this dude's at. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, where is he at? And I think he said like he ran off. Like it's all it's pretty easy now. But uh, the firefighters, they, the firefighters come up all casual too, and they're like, "Hey, what's going on?" I'm like, uh, "This guy's been shot. We don't know where the shooter's at." And they're like, "Oh no!" So they grab him and throw him in the truck, and then get the <laughs> heck out of there. So that was a, that was a really fun one. Like, I think of, it's just like so like the 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 comedy of it, like with the severity yeah. of it. You know, some like some dude's having the worst day of his life. Just you got shot. Been shot. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't say that, but I'm thinking it. I'm like, yeah, no way. Dude. Nah, fine. It's no way. Yeah. So it turns out, 38 special. You nah. can get shot and keep on ticking, and especially in the shoulder. Like it's yeah, man. I, I think in that situation, I would have my adrenaline's probably through the so roof at that you, point. Do you have like crazy adrenaline spikes when you have your games? What do I? So like, I uh, sleep like a baby afterwards. Really? Like the dump? Like yeah. When I come down off adrenaline, that's what I'm I was, like, that's what I was curious about because like in that job. Like you go th- like call after call after call. It's always like some level of like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like you get used to it pretty quick. So it's like it, it felt like a very calm call. Like I wasn't like, oh, oh, oh. I wasn't like panicking or anything. I was like, all right, what I got to do next? Okay. Got to let, let the other guys showing up, knowing what's going on. So it's like you go through it. And if no one's like shooting at you or anything, it's like it's a pretty, pretty chill situation. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy. It's kind of like policing and the NFL have – like playing and preparing are like kind of similar mm. because you 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 train for you train for that stuff. Some yeah. people train. I mean, yeah. Some. I mean, that's that's not always. At least in our profession, or my, what was my profession, I should say. That's not that was not always the case because like dudes would graduate the academy and, and they say, never yeah. work out again. They don't Dang. go to the range. But see, you train for that though. Like you, yeah. like you personally, you train for that. Well, yeah, it's like I like I like to shoot and I like to work out. So it's like okay. I'm comfortable here. I'm if worst case, I'm I'm comfortable in a little bit of chaos. Yes, as long as I'm not getting shot in the face. And that's that's the exact way that uh, that football is. Yeah, like the chaos. You just it's it's a controlled chaos because mm-hmm. you know we're in a stadium, surrounded by fans, mm-hmm. safe. But uh, it for sure is chaos, and we train for it every day. Yeah, because. It's not super life or death, but like it's been proven, you can die on that field. So that like, that that would I would <laughs> say is very uh, plausible, which is nuts. I mean, you got to consider the the level of athlete that you guys are with the matching with the size, running full tilt into each other's heads. It's a collision sport. Are you ever worried about like TBIs and stuff like that? Like you always getting scanned, like like some nah. of the like in the commercials or in, like when they're watching a the game, they're like, we pride ourselves on safety, like. Is that just like all talk or are they doing pretty good jobs? That's like a corporate thing. I don't yeah. know. But for me, like mentality wise, every game is like if I die, I die. Fuck it. Yeah, that's the way to do it, man. Let's go. Yeah. Like, this is what I've so this is just one of my dreams. Like I've got other bigger dreams than like just playing in the NFL. Mm-hmm. But I'm like super blessed to be here. And uh yeah, that's just like mentality like you gotta do you know it's actually harder to make it as a youtuber than it is to get to the nfl for real no i just made that up (laughs) oh i was about to say what the i have no it's no way (laughs) i was about to say it's no way you get in the algorithm and (laughs) things starts to take off Uh, i got you i got you a little bit it was like oh damn football's getting easy yeah hey hey not that impressive anymore sorry easy no that's yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good mindset to have. I don't know if other guys share that, but that seems like a very warrior mindset. So like, all right, as cheesy as it sounds. Oh, yeah. But, but that's that's how you got to kind of – I kind of think of it as like we're like modern-day gladiators. No, you guys, you guys absolutely are modern-day gladiators. And if you don't approach it that way, you're – most likely to like not even succeed. I would for assume real. like most of the guys that get to that level all kind of have that that mindset. Like yeah, do and, or it, die. and it and it, it might not be like if I die, I die. Mm. It might just be like 
win by any means. That mm-hmm. might be the mentality that they have, but that's still yeah. kind of if I die. Here's, I die. here's a question I'm curious about. When you're playing a game, right, and it's that back and forth and something does not go your way, interception, fumble, what's like that that feeling on the sideline or that feeling with your guys where it's like a demoralization? Uh, It just depends on really like what the – what the situation is. Mm. So say like our quarterback throws a pick with we're down say we're down eight. Mm-hmm. Quarterback throws a pick under four minutes mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. Then it's just like, dang, no timeouts. Yeah. Because you can like it's it feels like at times when you're watching, you can, you can feel, feel it. it. Yeah. It, like you a can, team kind of got the wind knocked out of them. Or yeah. it's like a team is just they came out and they came out swinging. Like they're mm-hmm. dominating the field. Yeah. Like you're you're the one on the field. Oh yeah, you can feel it in yeah. on the sideline. You can feel it in the game. Like mm. you can feel it in your body. Like when so say say like after a team scores, right? Mm-hmm. And I was the I was the kick returner and the punt returner for the Seahawks last year. And uh, after a team would score and go up like fourteen, I'm like, dang. God. But then, but then, like, what? Like, I played a lot of special teams, mm-hmm. and I like to think that like special teams has the word special in it mm-hmm. because we're like the the special operators of yeah. the football field or football team. The niche specific but, yes, job. Yes, it's, it's super niche. Uh, and it's just like everybody on this, all 11 guys right here have a specific job to do. Mm. And it's super specific to your position. Mm. And if you don't do your job, the dude in the back catching the ball is going to get killed. Yeah. And like I used to just kind of try to rally the guys, whether we're down 20 or 20, 50, 14, 7, 3. Yeah. We just kind of rally the guys and, and we used to go strike back for real. What was your what was your go-to rally technique? Was it like the just like the straight up hype? Was straight it like straight like cuss words? Cuss words, yeah. Just straight swear words. Yeah. You know, get the boys going. Dude. I feel like we would like for whatever reason we always reference like movies. Oh. Nah, I don't think I ever referenced the movie. We were all kind of nerds though, so <laughs> So it's like, this is where we hold them. This is where they die. It's stuff like that, dude. It's all. It was all pretty funny. It's three hundred. I used to watch that before uh, high school games. Yeah. I uh, tell you, give you a little insight to to me. I watch two movies before games, like mm-hmm. the night before, always, and it's it's been like that since my rookie season. One, The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. The Dark Knight. I'm DJ. Oh, nah, I don't even, bro, I don't, I don't even identify with Batman. I, I oh. don't, nah, I, it's the Joker for me. That's pretty sick. It's the Joker. Okay. He, his, his persona yeah. in that movie, how he's, he's uh, the yin to Batman's yang. Mm-hmm. He is, he is and chaos. He is chaos. And that's yeah. what I try to like tap into mm-hmm. as far as like going out and like playing a collision sport. You got to be chaos. Yeah. You got to be chaos, but you got to be comfortable with being chaos. Mm-hmm. And then another chaotic movie, uh, Black Hawk Down. Ooh. And I watch those two movies mm-hmm. right before like, I go to bed to wake up in the morning and it's like, yeah, I'm ready to go. The masculine urge to ride around with your boys on a helicopter of some kind with Colt 723s. Ooh. Listening to some sort of pop culture music is very high on my psychological needs. For sure. Once Actually, I knock that out, I'm gonna feel pretty good. You got one yet? I've done a helicopter ride with uh, with guns before. Do they have them out here? Oh, you, for, you could for sure find something. Yeah, we can mm. we can for sure find you something. Yeah, we could. We Worst case, like you could go do a hog hunt or something in Texas. Yeah, go knock out a hog hunt in Texas. Actually, do some real shooting. Yeah, That'd for be sure. Fun. That'd be really fun. For sure, that would be, yeah, we should set that up. I don't know if your agent would be okay with it. <laughs> he won't have to know. You got it. So, I mean, for brand awareness, we have to cater to the vegans, too. If you're smoking if you're smoking wild boars, it may not look good to them. We're not going to hit our Nike sales, DJ. Oh, yeah, we're not going to hit the Nike sales this year. 
sorry, dude. I had to hunt some hogs in Texas. Yeah. I don't know if he liked that, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. You got to have fun. Dude. <laughs> I'm at a point in my life where it's just like, just kind of, kind of with respects to my profession, do what I want to do. That's, that's a good spot to be. Yeah. It's a good spot to be. Yeah. Are you, what do you, what do you feel like? Cause I think about this for my career. Mm hmm. How much longevity do you think you'll have? Now, I know it's a pretty heavy wanna, question. You don't wanna, have to answer. This you, is your five. You can tell me, me to cut this or not, but oh no, this okay. is this is year five for me, and uh, I don't think I want to play like fifteen years, yeah, or sixteen years. Like I told you, I got I got bigger dreams than the NFL. Mm. Like I like I told you earlier before we started shooting, I want to I want to like I didn't tell you the full thing, but I want to retire to a farm. Mm. And just start my own like cattle ranching business, build a build a really family company. farming. Or yeah. <laughs> dang it, really DJ farming. Oh God, it's yeah. a quiet life. He, I yeah. messed up that line. Dang it, dude. Yeah, farming. At least I'll be doing it like on my own. That'd be you sick. know two feet. Yeah, rather than like you know you go. Would you to go farm. full like uh, Ted Kaczynski off the off the grid? Off the grid, yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, I think a, a cattle ranch is is what I want. Like, yeah, not too many cows, but enough to like make a little bit of money. Cause I'm, mm. I don't plan on like really needing money once I, I go off the grid. Yeah, just enough to pay for the stuff and be good. The the yeah. The only thing that I really 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 want is like a pack of dogs to hunt. That would be pretty fun. Like just like. 15 to 20 dogs. You're going to, I feel like you're going to be like having a, an estate pretty much. Yeah. So I want to do like a big it's like, family It's giving me like English vibes, like English or aristocracy vibes. Yeah. You'll just have, you'd have people that tend to the cattle. Yes. You have your hunting dogs. Get the, get the kids to do Mr. All Dallas, your, your shotgun is ready for hunting, sir. <laughs> oh, yes. That'd be nice. But then see, that's where money comes in. Then that's I, right. You're going to need some cash for that, dude. Yeah. You got to cut that out then. Yeah. I mean, if you if you find out the business angle with the venture capitalism that you got cut out from finding a new thing, you'd be good. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have to x that lady out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X get a new board going. Yeah, get a new board. Let's going. start have a new boat. board. Yeah, start a new board. You're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Heck yeah, man. Uh, question. Mm -hmm. What was it like to like transition from like being a police officer to like just doing, doing what you're doing now? So it was, uh, it was, it was actually pretty crazy. So money was a big concern. Mm -hmm. so it's like, all right, you're telling me I'm going to quit my super stable government job, even though I hate it, to make YouTube videos, which is in a niche that could get banned at any time. Fuck it, let's do it. All right, yeah, I'll do it. Like it, it kind of like my hand was kind of being forced with the with the jab and everything. I was not down for it. And uh, oh, you got it? No, 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 no. So that's why I quit. So my department was like, you have to get this. Let me shake your hand on that one. Jeez. I appreciate that. Yeah. So you, uh, they, they came out and they said, if you don't get this by the end of the month, you're fired. And I was like, dude, I do not want to risk just said, my life. You just threw it up. Yeah. Threw I, was, up my, my, uh, I felt pretty good because I was the first one to quit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? We're doing YouTube. I'm doing yeah. YouTube full time. I'm getting out of here. But by then, weren't, weren't you already getting like a... I had a little nest egg of, of subscribers and I already had kind of some systems in play for, mm -hmm. you know, people supporting the channel. So mm -hmm. there was money coming in. I was starting to run sponsors. So everything was kind of coming together. Yeah. It just wasn't at the point where it was like, I don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. So I was still worried about money and it was like, all right, hey, you know, I think this could do it. Uh, this is really picking up steam. Let's just go full tilt. We had yeah. My wife and I had no kids. She was working, so she had income, and I was like, you know, it's kind of now or never. Yeah, as, as as low of stress as it can be, so I just leaned into a full tilt. When I when I did quit, it felt like I was on vacation. So I, I remember I I said, hey, as of like this day, I am no longer working for like I put in my memo, I'm out. Turned all my stuff in, went home, and I was like, all right, guess I'm making YouTube videos full time. Hmm. So, At that point, were you already this person you are now, admin? So or were you still building that up? I was still I was still building it up. I think I only had like on Instagram how many followers did you have? Maybe only like I think I only had like it's, I can't remember if it was like 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh dang, you already had 30,000 uh -huh. on YouTube. 
Yeah, and I can't remember what it was on Instagram, but um, had to be like a couple hundred. It may so it may have been more than in YouTube at the time, because I technically started on Instagram and I used Instagram to kind of like funnel people to YouTube, cool. and then YouTube started snowballing a little bit. How many followers do you have on uh, Instagram now? Right now, it's like two. Don't say two point something million. No, no, it's not that much. Two hundred thirty-four thousand. I'm pretty that's, shadow banned. On that's Instagram, a though. lot. It's a, it's a good amount, uh, but I am very shadow banned right now. Like people will type in my full name, they can't find me. So it's kind of stagnated out, and then my YouTube overtook Instagram. So and Instagram's tough for making any money off of it. Yeah, like you can do like you can but make your business storefront in a way where people like kind of hear about you, but. Yeah. For doing like YouTube stuff, that like YouTube is more so my bread and butter. So when you started YouTube, did you start with the mask? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was still a cop at the time. COVID was going on. I didn't. Want oh, it. so you were a cop while you yeah, were doing? So I had YouTube. Oh on the side. man, that's that's dope. That's why you did the mask. Mm-hmm. That's why I did the mask because I wasn't worried about anything else but my own department hemming me up. Mm. So that's so what 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 would they have done? Like told you to stop? Potentially, yeah. They could said they could have made my life a little bit more. I don't know. Like looking back, I probably could have gone away with it. Yeah. But I just wanted to be like carefree. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't like I didn't want to worry about them hemming me up. If they were if they were found it, they could have been like, is this yeah. you? Been like, no face, no case. You know? Did did you ever get guys that uh like, dang, bro, you should watch this guy? <laughs> so one of my buddies who was also big into guns in the department, he was like, dude, is this you? He looks he has like the same build and sound you sound just like him. I was like, all right, yeah, that's me. I think he found me out when I had like thirteen thousand subs. Dang. Yeah, he found it, and I was like, "Oh crap! All right." Yeah. He was watching me. your videos, like, "Damn, this guy is this smart. Guy. This guy seems really familiar." Yeah. Yeah. So that was there was something like that. So then, yeah, the mask. Even after I quit, I had the mask for a bit because I was like, "All right, like it's kind of part of the brand identity." And then I was thinking about like, well, I want to evolve this. I don't want to have to wear a mask the entire time I yeah. wanted to do it because now the reason for it is gone. So then I eventually unmasked. But I want to do the unmasking right, so there's a whole like, yeah. When you did line. it, it was it was it was it was nice. No, thanks, man. I think I I started following you like uh, you were around like I think like one thirty. No kid. On uh, Instagram, that's nuts. Yeah, so I I'd have been following you for a minute, and then yeah. you know I know I know a mutual friend. Yeah, you, you uh, buzz with Garantum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that guy. Yeah, he's. I, I like that guy a lot. Yeah, he's he's a solid guy, solid, mm-hmm. solid guy. Yeah, but, I think that's where I found out about you. I was like, because he was like, yeah, I went shooting with some Seattle players, bro. You know, it's funny. Everybody, everybody, uh, like, oh yeah, man, I, I saw you on a uh, Grand Thumbs, <laughs> like, <laughs> bruh, dude. I know. I was there. I, I lived that, it. I that was me. That was me, and it's just like. That's how, that's how I got a lot of my followers, like from you, mm. from freaking Garantham. Yeah, I think it's cool, man, because like honestly, looking at guys that are in the football, you don't know that much about them oh, because yeah. they sanitize a lot of their public image. Yeah, for sure. And I like me just assuming it's like, hey, they're not going to, if they're into guns, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of guys have guns, they just don't talk about it because they, oh, yeah, they don't want the heat. It's a black eye. Like you'll take mm. a black eye for sure. Yeah. You'll take a black eye. And then I kind of like to think that I kind of trailblazed a little bit, not mm. not taking full credit for it, trailblazed that avenue for like athletes to just, yeah. like a lot of athletes show their guns while they hunt, but not a lot of guys show like them, you know, running drills, running yeah. a Mozambique or, mm. or running a bill drill. Shot the man car drill the other day. Man car drill? Which one's that? The, uh, like, so it's five drills. You do like the, uh, I think Achilles Tactical does this drill. Okay. And uh you do like uh one one from uh compressed or what do you call it? When this Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah. Depressed, compressed. Depressed, compressed. So depressed and it's like under point five. Oh. That's pretty I quick. Think it's like under point how, how far away is the target? Like twenty five. Okay. Yeah, so it's a good distance. And then you go Damn, from like yeah, holster one point five mm-hmm. under under 1.5 and then you go from uh dang i'm blanking on it now um high ready Mm. high ready it's under 0.5 i think Mm. and then uh like low ready 
under point five, and then uh, it's it's rifle to pistol under point two five. I think. Yeah, that's all. That's all cooking pretty quick. As oh, yeah. far as standards go, that's a pretty high standard. Yeah, like I that. shot it. I I I missed like the last one. I got them yeah. all into like yeah the last from rifle to pistol. I was using them. If it makes you feel any better, that's those are pretty good standards. Like for police quals, yeah, they give you so much time Dang. compared to that. They'll be like, all right, you have five seconds to shoot re-index a mag and then shoot again I'm, I'm just making up some number but it's like it feels like forever that slow yeah it's like you boom boom like it, it takes no time you probably could do it three or four times so i will say like to tip my own horn like i loved i love shooting a lot more well, i still love to shoot but like back when i was a cop it's all i like i, I wasn't worried about like business stuff how i am now so i focused a lot of my mental energy and just was shooting because it was so cathartic and I remember running like two police quals at the same time with mm. a handgun. So it's like you need more ammo, but you could like at the same time running like the double amount of hits and you have to make it still in time. Mm -hmm. like, and then we did it. Like that was, it was so much fun. Yeah. But that just kind of shows how bad like the standards are. Yeah. It's like just because people pass those standards doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's going to be good enough. They're still, yeah. 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 I can, I can dig that. It's like, the, it's like the bare minimum. Yeah. 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 That's, that's like me training bare minimum mm -hmm. expecting like a high result or a, yeah. a good result we all know it's just it's not the reality of the situation yeah dang and i was about to say this do you feel like you you took that route as far as like focusing on more shooting because you went from like this is life or death for me and mm -hmm. then like this is just fun yeah i mean it's uh it was like you can't tr so when you, you can't train a, like how am i trying to say this you can't out train a job that's trying to kill you. Yeah. So it's like, as much as I could, I would always be asking like the gun guy or like the arms guy at the PD. I was like, hey, can mm -hmm. I get some ammo? Hey, can I get some ammo? Hey, can yeah. I get some ammo? I want to go train. Or it's like, I would jump at any opportunity, head to the range with the other guys and go shoot and get some training in. And uh, now it gets a little bit trickier because it's like, there's, there's supposed to be a purpose behind it. If mm -hmm. I was just doing shooting drills all the time, like if on my main channel at least, I think people would just get bored. So yeah. now there's like the aspect of okay, what is the audience gonna want to see? What what do what do my guys want to see? Right? What, what, what do you guys want to see? Let me know in the, in the comments. But uh, there's a little bit of that, right? So it's not as life and death anymore because I'm not getting paid to carry a gun. I just still a, kind of getting paid to carry a gun, but yeah, you know what I mean. It's not like the. I just had a a thought, a funny thought. You know what you should do? Mm. You should do Civil War alert. <laughs> <laughs> which which side? You pick it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. This shit's over now. Uh, I, mean, I, could, I could probably play both. The sides. grays would be nice. The blues yeah, would be yeah. nice. I, I could mean, probably play both. I can do a southern accent. Oh, you know what you should do? Like, uh, like our God does. You play both sides. Like, mm. you've done that before. I've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, we'll talk about it off camera. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be. That'd be funny. The war of northern aggression. Oh man, if you could play like three people, it'd be funny. As fuck. <laughs> oh man, that'd be yeah, funny. That'd be a good time. Be Dang, good time. that'd yeah. be crazy. I'm sure it would go. I'm sure it wouldn't be non controversial Bro, but whatsoever. Look, but look, that's what makes you like you're light years ahead. Well, that's what you can't be afraid. Like everyone's always because you're not be af offended. Yeah, but you're not afraid to like you walk that line. And yeah. that's fine with me. Like I want yeah. all my friends to walk the line like that. Otherwise, you're just playing too safe and that's boring. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, if you're on, yeah, dude. if you're playing it safe, then it's just like you yeah. know, you're just I think, living. I think to in live. my MG42 video, I was dressed as I. I did play it safe in that one for YouTube's sake. I left off the SS symbols. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have. They would have. I think got they would have. I think they would have knocked it out. But I mean, I was dressed like an SS soldier. But they don't. They don't demonetize other stuff. No, but it, well, I was gonna say in that same skit, I also had the IDF LARP too. So mm -hmm. it was supposed to be like funny, but yeah. Dang. Oh, you got a lot of stuff you could do. Yeah. I got some a lot ideas. Of hey, I'm all I'm all ears. Don't I say anything. We'll keep them. We'll yeah, keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll keep them I got some ideas. And the one that I'm thinking about right now would be like perfect. That I'm I'm excited to hear it. Oh, I had this question I just thought of. Okay. On the way here. So I okay. didn't just think of it. It was a lie. Has <laughs> like has any ever like grown man ever come up to you and been like, Hey dude, I bet my life savings on my fantasy draft of you? Like have they like have any sort of like that capacity like any like I get weirdness? I usually get this like bro like a year ago this is when I was like playing offense a lot 
They're mm-hmm. like, bro, you saved my fantasy team. <laughs> you saved my season, bro. Yeah. You got like 40 points and just saved my season. No one's ever like, you, you saved my mortgage. Oh, no. Nah, I, I I've bet never, the house on you. I've never gotten that. I've never gotten that, but... Probably a lot more of, likely they've been like, oh, I, I lost my house because of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a lot probably, of people. It's probably more like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so they were like, oh, bro, what's up, man? You were supposed to tell me if you were going to play a lot this game. Like, mm-hmm. bro, you want me to get in trouble, lose my whole job for I've for lost so to- much money off you on sports bets. Me? Yeah. You've just not panned out. Dang. I'm just kidding. I don't bet. Shh. I don't gamble. So I was about to say, that was a I could have, I would have helped you out, bro. Like, I yeah, it. nah, not this week. Yeah, give you a call. Hey, man, can you just please, man, just give me like <laughs> five more yards on this play? <laughs> it's like you call me at halftime, I'm like, bro, get, I need I'm five more yards. Staccato, dude, please <laughs> give me that first down. I need five more yards, bro. You got me? Heck, nah. I need, please, dude, don't, don't get the first down, please. Oh, man, bro, that would have been hilarious. Getting a call from you. I see your name on my freaking screen. <laughs> what does he want? What, I'm, I'm working. Well, leave me alone, um, dude. How my mom's called me like that before. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's gotta be fun. But like, she, it's she's like, into it. Like she's yeah. like, what? You good? Everything all right? I like, assume your mom watching you play football your whole life. Oh yeah. Get to, get to FaceTime you on the sideline. That's gotta be pretty sick. Man, but like, she's she's like super super into it. Mm-hmm. So like, Does she call you up and chew you out. Oh, my dad does. My yeah. mom's more like, like if I'm playing bad mm-hmm. or like, I, so 49er game, I like muff a punt and they get the ball. So basically turnover on me, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is, I go back to uh, the locker room and she, is, she texts me like, yo, are you good? Or like, <laughs> what's going on? And I I just look at it like, man, she is on my ass. I, we lose this game. She's going to be on my ass. Good. Yeah, I think my mom and my dad are my like biggest critics. Good, yeah, yeah. for sure. I couldn't imagine getting a text middle game, dude. I th- I would assume you guys just ditch all that stuff in your locker room. Nah, we watch people listen to music at halftime. People would text message Instagram. Dang man, yeah. It's like you guys are just working an old job almost. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a, I told you, bro. I'm a normal guy. Mm. I like to think that I'm like a normal. A normal, normal guy, hyper elite athlete, just yeah, just chilling. Yeah, just chilling, that's shooting fair. with you. Yeah, that's me. That's and that's the, fun. And the homies. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, so what's next? Like, what do you think? What do you think is next for you? Like, I don't know, I'll probably go to the gym after this. What I'm talking about? Oh, dude, my bad. <laughs> what are you gonna work out on? Arms, cause that's your favorite freaking lift. Dude, I'm trying. I'm trying to get big, dude. Um, you, you see our boy getting swole, on swole that daddy raw milk. <laughs> 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 oh man, my, my, man, that, he is, that boy gained forty pounds of lean mass in six months. Bro, he's raw huge. milk, huge. And then I was gonna send him my fucking uh, bench. He posted his bench, and I was mm. gonna send it to him. To humble him a little bit, yeah. But I was like, nah, I'll wait till he gets up and up and wait a yeah, little bit he'll, more. He'll, if he's going on that trajectory, he's gonna he's gonna start like uh, probably putting up some good weight. Oh yeah, it it'll come, mm-hmm. it'll come. But what are you gonna work out on? I probably do. I did a weird workout yesterday. What do you do? I did a hundred reps of a hundred pounds on arms for tricep. Then I did uh, preacher curls for a hundred, but just with like a 55 pounds of weight. What's the preacher curl? It's it was a machine one. So I I I usually rest oh, the uh um, with the like yeah, so it's like on the like it, it, I can't describe it great, but I like to have the bar on these two fingers for whatever reason, and then it's like trying to like supinate the arms, I mm-hmm. think is the right terminology. I'm not yeah. a physical trainer. S- uh, sue me. Same, same. Yeah. You we I know like what we're mon- talking monkey about. Monkey brain lift heavy weight. Yes. Uh then I was doing Zercher stuff. So I was doing those Zercher, like the Tom Havlin Zerchers. At the, at the public gym? Mm-hmm. People look at you funny when you do. Well, oh, you're you're a savage. Yeah, so like my my arms are kind of messed up right now, but yeah, doing the zercher clean to an overhead press. You're a savage. Like that, I like that. Bro, style. I've got something for you. Oh yeah, yeah, it's here. It'll it'll cook your arms. Oh, all yours. Big time. Yeah. So dumbbell bench, mm-hmm. bent over row, twelve minutes as many reps as you can. Oh. So so sets. So it'll be like you can either do sets of five. Yeah. 
That's the easy way out. Yeah. You do sets of eight, that's like intermediate. Or you can mm. do sets of 10. I did sets of 10 last Thursday. What was your weight you were repping at? Uh, Let's see, 25. So 35 is on each side with the the 45-pound bar. So like, to what, 225? Or, yeah. or 125? Because yeah. that'll be... Yeah. Yeah, right? It's 125. Sure. For yeah, sure, I think, I think so. Yeah, you for went, sure. I didn't go to college. You went to college, <laughs> and then you use uh, on the dumbbell bench press. You use like a heavy, a uh, uh, intermediate weight. So like not too heavy, not yeah. too light. Yeah. So that'd I be, that'd be pretty sick. I did eighties, eighties. That's still that that would cook pretty I quick. That dude. cooks. But you're a big chest guy. I feel like no, bro. I could. I don't. I hate arms. Really. Hate arms. Dude, you're talking trash to Stone about bench, man. Yeah, he he can't out bench me. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, he I, can't out bench. Well, his me. arms are like he's got a freaking condor wingspan. I dude. know he's got to go five stories to yeah. get down to his chest. But yeah, I'm like legs for days. I could do legs all day. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, legs. I could do legs all day. If they were like, oh yeah, we're we're gonna do a bench press today, I was like, ah, oh, can we squat? Like, is that okay? No. Work your upper body. We need you to use your arms. Nah. As far as future stuff, dude, uh, I totally, I'm, I kind of purposely derailed you to buy myself some time. But I do want to get into short films. I've talked about this before. <gasps> That'd be dope. Yeah. I That'd get into be the short sick. Film game. You're good at that, though. I love that stuff, man. You're good I, at I that. I love talking about guns, but I love like the you short direct film all your stuff. stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so That's I've awesome. had, I mean, it's, I've had some days where it's like, I'm thinking of a skit, like, all right, what's going to be the skit for this video? And it kind of comes to me the night before. I'm like, all right, cool. And we'll film the, the, like the skit throughout the entire day. Are you like a one take guy or like you know, multiple takes? We'll do multiple. So we'll, typically I run with one camera guy. So we'll mm -hmm. have to do cross coverage. So multiple takes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, all right, you know what? That one didn't feel so good. So let's try it again. And we'll try and do a takes until it feels good. It's like why not? Like we don't have we're yeah, not we got using all actual the time. film. Yeah, for so sure. It's digital, so why not just get like get it to be as good as we can? Yeah. Dang. Short films, I feel like you're good with that stuff. And then like your audience likes that. I think so. I think it's um I think it comes from a place of like underrepresentation and certain things from Hollywood. Like oh, yeah. you're not covering some cool stuff or leaving it on yeah, the table. Yeah, yeah. So we've been talking for a bit. I know you're a busy man. We got to get you out of here. I appreciate you greatly for coming on to the show. I'm kind of peeling back the curtain a little bit of the, a little bit of what goes into the pro baller lifestyle. A little bit of uh, who is DJ Dallas himself. Oh yeah, the, for sure. the mysticism. I like it. It's fun, dude. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm just happy that you invited me on. Too easy. Is there anything you want to self plug? Not really, but uh, I've got a foundation. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, the DJ Dallas Foundation, and um, yeah, it's just to help underprivileged kids uh, from like my hometown and surrounding counties to you know expose them to uh, health education and, and wellness opportunities to like help them better their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been working freaking day and night around the clock for you know trying to get grants and stuff. So. Awesome. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been it's been a time. That's like the only thing I'm like working on right now. Is it just the DJ? Is it DJDallasFoundation.com or? Yeah, it's just DJDallas.org. Cool. Too easy. Yeah, man. But yeah, man, I'm I'm happy you you had me. Yeah, this was a blast, dude. I had a great time. Yeah, man, I, I'm excited for the LARP stuff. <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. Hey, you and me, you and me both, dude. Bro, you and me both. I'm just I'm gonna sit back and just watch the comments. <laughs> it's gonna be funny. All right, all right, we're getting out of here. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. All right.